Because he was in Ud Musulmaj. He went through the fire, and this is what's left, and so we're going to go ahead with what's left. Now, in the beginning of Rabbi Yisheni, so uh, the Jews encountered all sorts of great problems, internal and external. The Shomronim were here in Yerushalayim, and the Shomronim protested that the Jews came back because uh, for decades they had inhabited already the city and uh, they, they didn't want that the Jews should come back. And uh, whenever the Jews attempted to rebuild the temple, to start to build the Bayesheni, they uh, went to the government and said to the government, uh, you know, the Jews are not entitled. And first the Babylonians and then later the Persians always stopped the building. And they stopped the construction of Yerushalayim also. And the Tanakh tells us in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah that the walls were uh, in, sh- in, uh, in shambles. Uh, they had no protective walls in the city. And there was, uh, there was a man by the name of Sanbalat who was the head of the Shomronim. So he's always going to the United Nations. He's always appealing against the Jews. There's no way out for them. And we have a reference to that in the Megillah of Esther, that every time Ahasuerus says to her, Ad chatsiya malchus, I'll give you till half the malchus. So that's not, the Gemara doesn't interpret that as just being a phrase. It means half the malchus till Yerushalayim, you can ask. If you ask about Yerushalayim, I'm not going to do it. So the uh, Jews are in a difficult situation. And then uh, Ezra is in a terrible situation. He comes back to Yerushalayim, the Jews that he comes back with. So the Gemara says, all the stores are open on Shabbat in Yerushalayim. Everyone is treating the, the uh, Shabbat as though it were a weekday. And there is a tremendous amount of intermarriage with the daughters of the Shomronim, with the other tribes that were here. And many of the Jews who came back from Bovo naturally brought their wives with them. Their wives weren't Jewish. So Ezra is faced with that problem. Now the Tanakh tells us that somehow we overcame all of these problems. But it does not tell us how he overcame those problems. How did he close all the stores on Shabbat? How did he get all those people to send away their wives or to convert them? It doesn't say how. But it just says that Ezra was able to do it. So Ezra generally is the miracle person in Jewish history. Chazal say, uh, If the Torah would not have been given through Moshe Rabbeinu, God, so to speak, had a default person that he could have used, and that would have been Ezra because uh, the influence of Ezra, the creativity of Ezra, the leadership of Ezra is uh, comparable only to that of Moshe, to Moshe himself. And Ezra is a Kohen, but he doesn't take the Kuhuna Gdola for himself because he says it belongs to the family of Tzodah. And he's not from that family. Uh, a, a something that the uh, Hashemunoyim would be unable to resist when they took everything for themselves. And uh, Ezra is the father, so to speak, of 
the spreading of Torah Shabal Peh amongst the Jewish people. The Bayesheni is the development of Torah Shabal Peh, which existed in Bayes Rishon, but not to the extent and not to the breadth that it did in Bayesheni. And uh, all of that is attributable to Ezra and to his uh, compatriot Nehemia. Nehemia is a uh, an officer in the Persian court who takes a leave of absence to come to Eretz Israel in order to save the situation here. He organizes the army, builds the walls, he organizes the judicial system. And then Ezra founds the Anshe Knesses Hagdola which would be the governing body of the Jewish people spiritually. So 120 people. Gemara tells us uh, many of the, uh, the names of many of them because this is the time when Nevoah ends. Chizcharya is the next to the last Novi, Chagai Chizcharya Malachi. And uh, after that, there's no Nevoah anymore. So how are we going to continue without Nevoah? So the Anshe Knesset Agdola created the vehicle and the society that can live without Nevoah. They can live on the basis of Torah. And that's the uh, lasting effect of Torah Shaval Peh was that it was the replacement for Nevoah, so to speak. You couldn't go ask the Novi anymore. So how did you know what to do? And uh, throughout uh, the beginnings of Bayashani, we have the development of the Mishnah, the uh, Mishnah Rishona, the Tanoim, all of which is the Torah Shaval Peh. So all of this is recorded for us in the Haftorah, uh, that the Novi Scharia describes his time. And uh, how uh, Yoshua is uh, raised and cleansed and becomes the Kohen Gadol, and how the menorah is lit. Now, the symbol of the menorah is the symbol of Torah white, Torah or. And therefore, when the menorah is lit, so that was the sign that what well, the Torah had become uh, spread within the Jewish people. Now, if the Jewish people had the Torah, then everything else would eventually somehow fall into some place and they would be able to survive and succeed. So that's a very important Torah that we have this week. Uh, again, it's the Torah of Shabbos Hanukkah as well because it describes for us a critical time and area that existed within the Jewish world.